What's up? It's your boy GKIP back with another video. Today what I'm going to show you is my top five tuner car choices out there for underneath $10,000. Stay tuned. Sneak peek. I picked one. I actually own one and I bought one after going through all of these decisions here. What I want you to do, sit back, enjoy the video, check out my top five tuner cars for underneath $10,000. I'm going to help you out. I had $10,000 to spend on a tuner car that I wanted to modify, have fun with, put on this channel, share with you guys. So which car should I choose? When you are looking for cars underneath $10,000. First car always comes to mind when you're looking for a tuner car. It has to be Miata is always the answer. I was looking at a Miata at first. Doesn't make a lot of horsepower, right? You wanna go fast, swap a V8 into it. You can put a LS motor in it. I've seen somebody put a Coyote motor out of the Mustangs. Oh my gosh, these things move out, right? Hardest problem, how are you gonna get that traction down to the ground when you got that rear wheel drive? Doesn't matter, throw some slicks on that baby and you got you a fast car. You wanna take it the other route. Let's say you wanna go for more of a track build. There are so many parts out there for Miatas. There have been people customizing Miatas for the longest. You are going to love it. You're gonna find something that you're gonna enjoy about it. A lot of people like it. They, they like that it's very practical. You pop the hood on an older Miata, very simple underneath the hood. And oh my gosh, when you have those individual throttle bodies on a Miata, it just looks mm, so mint. Let's move on to number two. I was looking at a Mustang GT, 2005 Mustang GT. Funny fact about that, I actually used to own one. It was green with black stripes coming up it. It was very nice, it was very cool. Only thing is nowadays, when you're looking at these cars, 300 horsepower, it's kind of tricky. These cars are very heavy. They only make 300 horsepower. It's kind of hard to keep up nowadays. I mean, you can always go to boosted route, almost considered going nitrous on it with like a 100 shot or something like that. If you watched my last video, where have I been? I actually describe in there what I've been up to, the reason why I no longer have that Mustang. And now your boy is trying to get back into this thing, trying to show you guys what the top cars that were considered out there for underneath $10,000 for tuner cars. If you want to go a little bit older than an S197, you can actually go for like an SN95. Those are an older Mustang, however, they're still very clean, still get that V8, still get that great sound. Honestly, you just can't beat a V8 sound. I know it because I've had multiple different cars, different engines, but that V8 sound is just something about it where it sort of makes your chest sort of like boom, right? Now moving on to number three. We have a Volkswagen GTI, around the Mark VI generation. The cool thing about these are one, you can get leather interior. If you don't get the leather interior and you go for the claw, it's like this plaid cloth, it's really clean. You'll like it. Um, it's a little weird in photos, but when you see it in person, I swear you're gonna love it. They got the heated seats, they got the heated side mirrors, they're front wheel drive, so it's kind of hard to get the power down. But one cool thing about them is they come forced induction from the factory. That means turbo already on it. So when you need to upgrade, probably bigger injectors, intake, tune, all of these different things, they're gonna make your car faster. You get a nice exhaust on there, some launching going, um, and you're gonna actually have a lot of fun with a GTI. The best thing about it, it's a hot hatch. So it's practical, it's practical for a family, it's practical for just all the way around. Very cool car, and now we're gonna move on to number four. Number four would have to be a WRX. WRS. Cool thing about a WRS, I was looking around a 2005 year. I actually used to have one, I had a white one. I actually blew the motor up in this thing, dropped the STI block in it, then blew the transmission up in this thing. And after that, I just, I, it was enough, it was enough. I called it quits and let the car go. Sold it to someone, it's probably setting records out there, man. I did a crazy build on this car. Anyway, cool things about the WRS. And the year that I'm looking at was a 2005. You got all wheel drive there. You have heated seats in it, cause mine used to have it in it. The biggest trouble I have with this is it's very hard to find a really clean WRS from 2005 era. You're gonna get a lot out there where people beat on and try to find one that wasn't modified, forget about it. Now, number five, Civic Si. Eighth gen Civic Si. Super clean, right? The thing I love about them, those clean body lines down it. And then number one, most people who got into cars, it usually came from that era of Hondas or they started with like a Nissan. Some people out there started off with Volkswagens, right? However, it's just something about the Civic. I feel like it was just such a customizable vehicle that you can go with any kind of build you wanna go with any time of the year, and you're gonna be able to accomplish most of the things that you wanna accomplish with it. I've seen track builds, I've seen super fast drag strip builds, I've seen all types of crazy things, especially, oh, you ever seen a Time Attack 8th Gen Civic Si sedan? Super clean, super clean, now trust me on that. So there you are, those are the top five tuner cars out there that you could purchase with your money for underneath $10,000. 
$10,000. I mean, you got the Miata out there, right? Miata's always the answer. You got a Durrettes out there, all wheel drive, baby. Hitting it in the snow, don't have to put it up for winter. You got Mustang GT, rear wheel drive, burnouts, crazy stuff. You can even do some drifting if you wanna get into that realm. Civic SI is out there. So many ways to customize it. Oh, Mugen kit on the back of it. Bang, gorgeous, right? JDM parts. And last but not least, you got the GTI hot hatch, baby. Very practical, good for a family. So which one do you think I picked? So I actually chose 2012 Volkswagen GTI. Check this out. You the side mirrors, keyless entry, inside leather seats, fine with the GTI in the headrest. I got the six speed manual. Ooh, can't be showing those mods too quick. All right. Very clean, sunroof. Honestly, it was a pretty easy decision. I mean, you consider the fact that these things come turbo straight from the factory, makes it really easy to modify them, make quick power, easy power. The fact that it's light, the power to weight ratio goes up. So anyways, it's your boy G-Kid. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, make sure to hit the bell for the notifications. Can't wait to see you in the next video.